In the story Oversleeping, the author blends reality and fantasy, what is real and what is not real. Analyze how this helps the reader identify with the main character. So of course the reader is you and he wa and the, the author wants us to analyze or the test question wants us to analyze how this helps the reader identify with the main character. And identify with the main character means how, how we're like the main character. How are we like the main character? Um, write a well-organized, structured response, which means don't just put anything down in any old order, but write a, a nicely written um, uh, paragraph using specific evidence from the story to support your answer. All right, so we have to take this and we have to talk about the character and I'm going to do a line here and I'm going to put the character and above the line this time I'm going to put <laughs> the character's reality and what the character does and the character's fantasy and what the character does. And I'm going to go ahead and put beginning and you know what I'm going to do here, middle and end. And you know, if you're not sure how to organize your thoughts, you can always do it chronologically by beginning and middle and end. And then, as I'm reading the story, we know that, the, that we're going to get examples of reality and we're going to get examples of fantasy. When I get an example of reality, I can just do an up arrow and write the example. If I get an example of fantasy, I can do a down arrow and put fantasy. If I get another example of character, I can do an up arrow, write a statement, and just go through the story and write my statements, see what I get. But then what I need to do is make myself a note, which is going to be really important, is how it relates, how it relates to me. Okay, how, how I, how it, how I identify with it, how it relates to me. Okay, how it relates to me because it says how it helps the reader identify with the main character. Boom. Okay, so, it, so, so think of this as a whole separate line of its own. So in the beginning, so, so you're gonna be taking each one of these possibly and kind of showing how it relates to you as you're reading it. So one of the things that happens here, just so you know, is the person is sleeping. And while the, the person is sleeping, um, he's dreaming of um, being an actor, okay? Let's put that here, um, an actor. And I'm just going to call that an actor dream. And that might be one of the ways it relates for me is maybe when I was 14, I dreamt of being an actress.
So once I have everything on my um, organizer, then I'll go through and just think about myself and how some of the things that are on there relate to me. And then I'll see that by blending the reality and the fantasy, the author may or may not have figured out ways to help me identify with the main character. You know, how does that help me identify? So when he, when he comes up with things like um, an actor dreams, what is he doing? It, 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 what is he doing? Is he is dreaming what he is doing, or is he is he providing a situation um, that that I may have had? So when I write my paper, I might actually put I I dreamt of being an actress as, as, at that age. Um, so the author provided similar experiences so that I could identify. So what the author is really doing is using reality and fantasy maybe to help me provide, to help provide similar experiences. So I'll have to work with the wording a little bit after I read the passage, but I can tell that setting it up this way, reality, fantasy, and how it relates to me um, will work just fine in helping me organize a pretty good paper, pretty good paragraph. Get to the four on this one for sure. Okay. All right, and that brings us to the 10th practice prompt. I hope you're doing well with these, and I hope you're moving through them quickly. I'm going through them rather slowly um, as I talk about them, and I sure hope this is useful. See you on the next set.